hold your tongue. Relax. Don't do it. <laughs> so, mga panandalian na yan. Panindali, panindalian, ligaya, saya. Akala mo masaya? Tigilan mo na yan. Hindi yan maganda. Hindi yan maganda sa'yo. Hindi yan maganda sa asawa mo, sa mga anak mo. So, for the last part, emotional security that us wives can give our husbands. But then again, this is from my point of view, this is from my experience, and this is what has worked for me. Yes. I hope that some of my my um, tips here or what has worked for us will also uh, be something that maybe will will help you also. Yeah. Okay, so number one would have to be, I am your wife, I am not your mother. Oh my, yeah. <laughs> that's so, so true. Yeah, so what do I mean by that? So sometimes us wives, can hurt our husband's emotions by lecturing them or scolding them or uh, trying to mother them mm -hmm. and um, we forget that we are the wife we are to be um, somebody to support them somebody to um, lift them up and somebody to um, uh, help them with things in life decisions for example, honey, what do you think would be something that you won't like when I'm not being a wife and I'm trying to mother you around? I think parang when you're nitpicking everything that I'm doing, yeah. you're challenging everything that I'm doing, and parang, uh, you have to do this, you have to do that. I can't believe you didn't do this. That's all you had to do. Or maybe doubting your capabilities. Oh my gosh, yes. Also that. Yeah. Hindi mo anak natin. Or you know, you know, things like that. I think um, we need to give our husbands more credit. But I also understand that there are some partners who are also very challenging. But then I think the best thing to do is ask ourselves and you know reflect on how we are towards our partners. Okay, the next one is something that I have found very beneficial in our marriage is to speak life yeah. to my husband. One of the ways that I am able to speak life to him is when we pray as a couple, as husband and wife. So we pray for each other out loud. So Doug prays for me, I pray for him, and I really speak blessings over my husband. And I really speak life um, to him because, you know, um, to me, those words are also words of encouragement to him. And I really want to bless my husband and I really want to speak life because it, it blesses our family even more when when I'm praying for him, when I'm when I encourage him through those words. And sometimes Doug even tells me, You put me too much in the pedestal, you believe in me too much. <laughs> but I really do. And um for me I think that um, these words also make him love me more because he knows that he has um, me as his kakampe, me as his cheerleader. Yeah. So can I pick off from that? Pick okay. off from that. So when we got married, we were sharing our vows, and I said that you were my number one cheerleader. That wasn't just about basketball. Mm. It's it's in all aspects. You're you're there to appreciate and, and celebrate me whenever there is. Um, we're all flawed, us husbands, right? Mm -hmm. But you know, I I understand there are things that need to be worked on in terms of personalities, in terms of Character. characters, right? But is it gonna stop you from celebrating your husband or appreciating him, right? And as a husband, I get emotional security when you say those things even though i feel like uh, you're, you're putting me parang you're complimenting me so much honey but parang i believe that that will go miles yeah. for a lot of husbands out there yeah and you know speaking life is not just when things are going well even when things are not going well yeah. it's um encouraging your partner and letting him know that you are by his side and that you can get through it and he can get through it and you both working it together, you can make you know, make things again happen, right? So that would be something that I hold close to my heart. Speak life. Speak life. Even when you're fighting. Hold your tongue. Relax. Don't do it. <laughs> and then the next one would have to be, allow him to be a leader. Yeah. yeah. So how do I allow my, my husband to be a leader? Do I 
do I allow him to just, you know, um, dictate to me what to do and no. I have no voice? No. Of course not, you know. I'm also, I'm, I also have my own opinions. I also have my own stand and things. But, you know, when I say I allow my husband to be a, the leader, is I give him the free hand to also um, de- say something and to make decisions that I will be there to listen and be by his side. And um, with that, it has become so easy for us because when I say leader, I don't, I don't, he doesn't abuse it no. to overpower me or to silence me. Of course no. not. But then, you know, leader in terms of um, emotional security, in terms of, um, for us, the financials, you know, he's the one who fixes the finances. And then, um, what else? I have a lot to say about this, actually. Okay, so, so. Um, there are a lot of people that are not natural leaders. Uh, me, I'm a natural leader. Like It, it comes very uh, second nature to me. Um, but I believe that there are very equally important roles as a husband and wife. Mm-hmm. And if, let's say, for example, the wife has a stronger personality, which is the case in a lot of relationships, but your leader is not the natural leader, well, what if, what if you will also build them up to being a leader in some areas of your relationship, in some areas of your household? It's going to give them a lot of confidence. Mm-hmm. And by doing so, by allowing even your partner, your, your husband, to become a leader, it's going to make your, your relationship much stronger. And mind you, when I say leader, my perfect example of a leader is a servant leader. That's number one. And my example of that is Jesus Christ. He is a servant king. He is a servant leader. He is my primary example. You think Jesus ever abused that kind of leadership? He was very, hum- very humble. Right? He was born in a manger. He didn't... He, wasn't, he had a choice to be born in, in a, some a big king. kingdom, right, and be served. No, he's the king of kings, but he still chose to serve the people. Yeah. He washed the feet of his disciples, dirty feet. Divine that has so many symbolism on, on so many levels about washing our sins. And be a servant leader, right? be a servant leader, husband. Serve your wife, serve your children, um, even serve your family, your and that embodies being a good leader. And when the going gets tough, when you're in a relationship, your wife has a stronger personality. She has a stronger personality than I do. But guess what? She's not perfect. I'm not perfect. And when she's down, I'm there to pick her up. And when I'm down, she's there to pick me up. We're both leading our family together. Yeah. Right? That's right. I like that. So, one of the things also that um, I we talked about a while ago is be careful what you say to your parents, to your friends, and people around you about your spouse. But most importantly, I think is don't talk down um, on your husband or don't speak it about your husband in front of your children, in front of your children. or even behind his back. That's trauma for the children. It's trauma. It's yeah. trauma for the children. Um, you know, um, it more than us speaking out of a in a hurt situation uh, from a hurt place i think it it is worse when it's said to our children it, it pains them and it hurts them you know me um i grew up in a broken family but my mother my mom she never spoke bad about my dad or said anything about my father about anything and i think what helped us um, to really grow up and love our parents in spite of and despite of the situation was because no one really said anything bad. It's important to lay out the cards and to explain to the children what is going on in a proper way. In a proper way. This is the situation. We are here now. This is what's happening. Explain to them. But um, do not break them down by saying bad things yeah. about each other, by by cursing each other or by um, letting that person look bad, yeah. even if that person is bad. Okay, but the whole point here is we are trying to make the children understand the situation. Yes. But this is a deeper 
topic already. Yeah, like, it's there's levels to it yeah. for sure. So okay, on a on a lighter um, situation. Daily, daily sometimes fights and so ano, yung mga daily fights and away kayo and everything. So you mean tatay mo kasi niyan eh. Ano yan eh? Matigas pulo niyan eh. Mga ginaginit. And then, you like know, it's, it's traumatizing. It's traumatizing, di ba? Or it's, it, it doesn't speak well. Yeah. Because this might work two ways for you, to your disadvantage. They will talk that way to you and they will talk that way to their dad. They will disrespect you. So, be careful, you know. It's really important, even in front of our children, that we speak life to them mm-hmm. and speak life about the person that you chose to be with. Any confrontation, every any fight, I think you everything should be done behind closed doors. Be careful what your children hear. Okay, the next one would have to be open communication. Speaking peacefully. But you mm-hmm. know, honey, this one it it's really it takes two to really do this. Yeah. You know, to have open communication because I noticed that wives, they like to talk to their husbands. But husbands, they don't like to talk to their wives. They don't want to communicate with their wives. They're always like, Baba they also They always want to go already. Are they on their phones? No, it's not that. They're also very, I noticed they're also very, um, what do you call that? Um, they have a lot of excuses when, when, when it's time to I talk about real matters. There's a lot of distractions that the husband can be doing. In, and they will just avoid the whole, the, the communication. Yeah, they, they, they don't want to talk about things. They just want to skip it and and let the wife decide on things. Or maybe they're the only ones who's going to decide. So that really doesn't work. You know, if there's an issue brewing, just imagine a volcano. You have one issue, you throw it inside. But the volcano is just starting to build up and build up. Another issue, build up, build up. Until sobrang punung puno na, what's gonna happen? It's gonna explode, and that's when you start to say things unreasonable. You start to talk down on your on your spouse. Yeah. A lot of issues can happen. Yes. So yes, open communication, discuss peacefully. Peacefully, yes. Always discuss peacefully. Okay. There should be a goal to this that you will come to a good solution. Mm-hmm. After your conversation. Oh my gosh! Yes, yeah. I like that baby. Yeah. There's a lot of times where where you guys are discussing and talking and communicating, just going round and round and round and round. That happens and round. to us too. Yes, but then there's a solution or there's an agreement. Na parang we like for Chex and I, we we can't seem to agree on what happened. So instead, na magawa kami, we will just discuss peacefully and say agree to disagree. Let's move on from this. Enough yeah. now. And there's no hang ups. Yeah. Right? So, okay, that's nice. Yeah. Alright, so the next one would have to be oh my goodness. Mm. I'm part of a lot of groups, women groups. And so I always hear wives or read about wives saying that they have problems with their husbands when it comes to this. Okay. I'll start it with a phrase don't bring other people to your bedroom what do i mean by that don't bring other people to your bedroom infidelity yeah, yeah that's one aspect what yeah else? and infidelity is not just having like physical contact with someone but it's also um lustfulness pornography pornography yeah and then you know it can be you watching pornography and your wife knows it you also might be reading pornography and your wife knows it and you know that your wife doesn't like it or you're hiding it from your wife. Mm-hmm. Mind you, your wife is going to find out and that never does anything to your intimate, your intimacy yeah. with your spouse. It's going to make it worse. Spouse. It's going to make it worse. Yeah. And um, it's so important that we learn our boundaries, especially when you're married. You need to learn your boundaries as husband and wife. And um, these things do not do you any good. Not only does it make you feel bad to be hiding something, it also makes it bad when you are trying to perceive your wife to be whatever it is that you're watching. Or mm. you know, it 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 it, 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 disrespect, per- it, it perverts them. Yeah. yeah, and it's not good. So. 
um, be very careful what you bring in the marriage, yeah. what you bring into the marriage. So pornography has no place in the marriage, guys. And believe me, if you do that, you're providing a lot of emotional security to your wife because now your wife is thinking without that, you're enough. Yeah. Or she's of course, enough. she's enough. Yeah. So um, be very careful. And um, these are the things that um, I, I read this is so much that they're mm -hmm. so deep into it. Yeah. That they would rather. It's, it's an addiction. We've heard this from church. Uh, from people who have done their testimonies and how they have been addicted to pornography and seek help seek help yeah. yeah okay and then of course the most important this is an anchor yeah. of your relationship yeah in your marriage and it's an example also to your children mm. um, it is what you call trust trust and then trust if if you're looking for trust from me I have a huge responsibility not to break that and to not abuse that trust. Yeah. You know what? Um, I heard this um, from somebody who was really close to me and said, you know, I don't, I don't know why uh, people in a marriage should want to break their trust. They don't know that um, they're involving also their children when they break that trust mm -hmm. that they have uh, or that they have... Um, uh, committed to the Lord and committed to each other. Um, when you think of doing that, think about the long-term effect that it has on not just you, not just your wife, but your children and your children's children because this carries over. Whatever they've seen in that marriage, whatever they've seen in that relationship, it can either make them or break them. But why would you want to gamble on that? So always cherish that trust that you have for each other and um, take good care of it. You know, um, family, the family that you have now is God's gift for the both of you. It's God's gift also for your children. And you know, Satan will do everything to destroy the family. So mga panandalian na yan, panandalian, ligaya, saya, akala mo masaya. Tigilan mo na yan. Hindi yan maganda. Hindi yan maganda sa iyo. Hindi yan maganda sa asawa mo, sa mga anak mo. Wala kang tinuturong mabuti dyan. You know, we, we are responsible for our family. One day when the Lord comes, He will ask you, How were you with your family? What example did you give your children? Did you teach your children about me? So, you know, these things, you know, we get so busy with life, we get so busy with things around us, the worldly things. We think that this is all fairy tale, this is all not true, this is just, you know, it's set aside. But I think, you know, we have to look deeper into our lives. This is temporary. We have a whole eternity. And it's very crucial that we will also be the example of our children, the example of everybody around us. What do you have to say, honey? No, I mean, trust is, you know, that's for both ways, right? Yeah. And trust can only be done uh, when it's built over time. Right? Even when mistakes are done and you violated that trust, it's not going to be automatic to get the trust back. You need to build that trust again. You need to start from scratch, so to speak, right? Yeah. So it's so crucial to solidify that trust for your relationship. So while we've discussed so many things today um, and how emotional security is so crucial for a marriage and how we each have each other's um, parang calling to support our, our, our partners, right? Mm -hmm. And a big issue that we will be discussing next week, okay? Uh, watch out for episode three. Um, it's about maintaining physical intimacy. Mm -hmm. Because that's a very big issue for a lot of couples. It's may it be physical in terms of sexual or whatever it may be. It's going to be a taboo um, conversation because not everyone talks about it, right? Not comfortable with not it. Not comfortable I, with it. I but find it. Yeah, it's a bit awkward. But you yeah. know, there might be some people that might be blessed by this conversation. So, yes, abangan na lang. Wait for our episode 3, March 4, 
for Family Matters with Doug and Cheska. Have a good evening, guys. <laughs>